Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name's Jason and this is Lesney's 78 Thames Estate Car. It was in the Matchbox range from 1959 through to 1966. This example is one of the later versions of the casting as it has a plastic window transparency, albeit detached. Someone also thought it wise to cover it in a smattering of red paint. This has ended up on the windscreen, plastic wheels and of course across the casting. The casting is based on the Ford Thames 400E van, produced by Ford UK between 1957 and 1965. And here is how a minibus 400E looks in real life. The 400E replaced the aging 1930s design of the Fordson E83W. The 400E was powered by a 1.7 litre four cylinder petrol engine or a 1.6 litre Perkins diesel engine. It was initially released as a van, but shortly afterwards the 8 to 10 seat estate car was made available. This was followed by a 12 seat minibus model. Here I use Dettol antiseptic liquid to soak the paint stained plastic parts. This loosens the paint for easy removal without damaging the plastics. In March 1965, Ford reverted back to the Ford name on all of their commercial vehicles. The last 400Es were produced in August 1965, so this arrangement did not last for long. The 400E was then replaced by the famed Ford Transit van. Of the castings, all had a black base plate fitted by a tongue and a slot at the rear, with a split rivet holding the front in place. They were all painted in blue and yellow, but early catalogues had them coloured in red and white. Silver trim was added to the headlights, grille and front and rear bumpers, though the later versions had the rear grille trim omitted. A look here at the transparency, see how much nicer it looks already having softened and removed that red paint. A bit of a polish should have it gleaming like new. The black plastic wheels were only ever fitted on the models with the green tinted windscreen. Silver or grey plastic ones were available on earlier windowless or clear windowed versions. It appears that the red paint has removed itself from the metal as easily as it vacated the plastic, judging by the colour of the water. Now with all that paint removed, I will use my wire brushes attached to my rotary tool ahead of priming. Beneath the Thames front nameplate existed a badge that would read 10, 12 or 15. This figure represented the capacity class measured in Imperial hundredweight, with 20 hundredweight making an Imperial tonne. Unfortunately, I'm not very clued up on Imperial measurements, but I am aware that a short hundredweight is a US customary measurement as well. The minibus versions of the 400E, which are slightly larger than the estate car, were all 1500 weight in capacity. Special bodies were quickly made available on the 400E's release. These included ambulances, compressor or generator carrying flatbeds, milk floats, mobile shops and pickup trucks. The popularity of the pickup version meant that by 1961 it had become a standard model and was no longer considered a special body. The 400E was made available for left hand drive markets and thus it was popular in Europe. Ford of Denmark even requested an extended wheelbase chassis with a six cylinder Zephyr engine to meet local demand. Production extended outside of Ford's Dagenham factory with 400Es built in Australia and New Zealand. I apply the base layer of yellow first, which is Tamiya's TS16, the lightest of their ready to go rattle can shades. The original models were yellow from the roof to the base of the windows where the mask for painting ended. I've painted a little further than this to ensure a smooth and even finish. Of course, with this being an A-series matchbox, the quality, colour and location of the paint varies wildly model to individual model. Now I'll show you where I've taped off using blue 3M tape for the crisp edges and regular masking tape covering the rest of the roof. 
I used Tamiya TS13 clear to seal in the tape before layering on TS41 coral blue. Each of the colours received two coats with the clear coat separating applications. I'm confident these two shades will bounce off one another and be a reasonable match to the original. Now though I shall reassemble prior to any detailing. It's a fairly simple construction with most components simply clicking together. Oh, that was so satisfying. With the window unit nice and secure, now the base can similarly be snapped back on. Finally, I'll use my Molotow chrome pens to detail the grille, headlights and both sets of bumpers. Right, so now let's take a look at how this egregious estate car once presented itself. The window unit had somehow detached from the rivets that were meant to hold it in place. It had some pretty bad paint to begin with, but it has been topped up with some patchy red. That red has also spread to my lost windscreen and onto the plastic tyres. This Thames was looking like it had been for a swim in the river, so here is how it looked once I'd fished it out. I'm proud of the Tamiya paints, if you can be proud of an aerosol tin of colour. Both the yellow and the coral blue are a tremendous match to the original two-tone shades. My lines aren't perfect on the division, but they are kind of representative of the overspray marks you would find on Lesney's mask sprayed models. I've rescued the plastics, cleaning both the paint stained wheels and windscreen, and fitted the latter to the roof, back where it belongs. The axle ends have been touched with chrome, as has the exterior detailing on the bumpers, grille and headlights. Anyway, that's all from me for today. Please, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, as fewer than 50% of my viewers are. And a big shout out to all those who already are subscribed. Don't forget to click like if you enjoyed this production, and that just leaves me to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.